let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you again for tonight. As we do, O oh God, for every night. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for it is in you that we live and move and have our being. You are the one we boast about all day. Tonight, Lord God Almighty, is all about you, as always. We want to testify of your goodness, of your faithfulness, of your loving kindness, O oh God. For we have tasted of the Lord. And we declare, O oh God, that you are good. You are wonderful. You are gracious. And so, Father, Lord God Almighty, we ask that you bend down, come down, and listen, O oh God, as we, your people, whom you have created for your glory, do our best, with the help of your Holy Spirit, to glorify you tonight, to magnify you tonight, to extol you, to give you praise, to give you honor that is due only to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Who is T? Somebody has just something called T. Who is T? Person doesn't want to, to us to know who the is. One. One. Who is one? We're one. suspecting it. Uncle one day one. Is... That one is one day. <laughs> <laughs> and it, only Jesus is the first, don't you? Whoever it is, that is one. Anyway, I mean, yesterday I came to give a testimony that God gave me a dream. And in the dream, I was preaching a message that I had never preached before. And uh, there were only two words in the message. But God. And I woke up. And then I decided to investigate. So one of the first things I did was I went on the internet and I said, but God, just two words. Has anybody written anything about but God? I'm going to open the internet to you so you see what I saw. When I opened, this is what I found. First one is 31 but God Bible verses. That's the first one that surprised me. I've given you this uh, because uh, it's important for us to know in healing wings that we serve a living God. I didn't I didn't expect that, but God would have any anyway. So this one, let's open it and see. 31 but God Bible verses. This one says, some of my favorite scriptures are the but God Bible verses found throughout God's word. But God brings hope when we can't see a way through. But God means ashes and the end of our story. But God says God, not our circumstances, always gets the last word. I saw this recently as I sat across the table for my close friend listening as she spilled out the events of the last few months. On a normal day, doing ordinary paperwork, she'd uncovered something odd. The more she researched, the more she learned, and like pulling a straw thread, her life unraveled before her. Her marriage had been destroyed by deceit and unfaith and infidelity. She had no idea how to move forward, much less help her children. Let me expand this. I had no <laughs> help our children walk through their own tangled grief. I had no solutions, though I listened and we prayed. The overwhelming situation left me wondering how this would end. 
when we are up against overwhelming circumstances, parenting struggles, resulting finances, on a new diagnosis, we may see no way out. We are helpless to fix it. And we are left wondering how it will all end. But God. And then she she goes to and and uh, and as she goes further, then there is always always a but God. I drove into the scriptures a few weeks ago to find all the but God Bible verses. I was blown away. It's all throughout the Old and New Testaments because it's how God works. And it should be a guiding principle before we ever see the ending. So she she started listening the 31 ones that she put. Now you see here that uh, Google was asking, people also ask, what is meant by but God? Let me see what this one says. The word but in scriptures often introduces the message of gracious and compassionate intervention of God. The simple term captures the nature of our God. Um, this is someone else. 15 but God verses. But God, two of the best words to hear in the story. God is so good to his children. This can be evidenced through scripture, which is full of all but God moments. If you are in a season where you are waiting on God, encourage your faith by reading through these, some of our favorite but God moments in scripture. So she goes through them. This is another, another one. But God, 20 verses to remind us of God's faithfulness. But this small conjunction of the English language flows in and out of our conversations daily. It means on the contrary, except or unless. As preposition, it means with the exception of, except, save. As an adverse, adverb, it means only or just. It is a small word but useful in enhancing the meaning of surrounding words and signaling appropriate pause. But God signifies a redirection in which we are able to accomplish in contrast to the power and works of God. The phrase, the phrase but God, appears verbatim as an important concept throughout the entirety of the Bible. Though the author of every breath and blessing Humanity's sinful nature continues to rebel against our loving God. Uh, let's, look, let's look at another one. Uh, but God, the two words are the heart of the gospel. This one is actually a book on written on but God. Just two words. Understand they are used in scripture. And you will never be the same. This one is a book. 26, but God. It's interesting to see how the meaning of words change, even though the letters stay in the same position. As a young Christian, my utterances of pleading with our Heavenly Father sounded immature, whining to him. But why? God, why? As experience writes its lessons on the pages of my story, my misunderstanding of God clears. Maturity in faith offers a new confident expression. But God, two words change everything when we speak them to remind us of who God is and what he is all about. Jesus was nothing. Let's hear what this one says briefly. I recently finished the big picture series on Genesis and Revelation. And before taking on another longer series, I felt I could do a few messages on a favorite little biblical phrase of mine. And it's not just a favorite phrase of mine. No street 
It is one that has been loved by countless saints over many millennia. It is the phrase, but God. Little did I know in the preparation of this study that I would have another but God moment myself. Well, I think this, this one is actually a book about what God. Let's look at one or two more. But I think we've, 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 we've seen this before. I believe we've seen this before. But God. Sometimes the smallest words are the most powerful. Take the little word if, for instance. When this two-letter word is ignored in Bible public messages, it can, it can result in a total misunderstanding of those passages. The three-letter word but is equally powerful, both in everyday use and in the Bible. Uh, so this is another one. And it goes on and on. I mean, I was I was shocked. I didn't I didn't I, I couldn't have imagined that. But God, being rich in mercy, a few years ago, my college baseball team was blah blah blah. You know, uh, this is another. The two words are the heart of the gospel. But God. Okay, I think we've seen this. It's, it's a repetition of a book that we saw earlier on. What God? Bible verses. God can turn any situation around. God causes all things to work together. Let me look at the last one. There was there was one about the desiring. You know, I mean, this this goes on. I mean, you know, so if you have an opportunity yourself to to check it out yourself. I mean, I could not believe that all this was here, and God just alerted me to it. Just like that. But God, these two words are overflowing with gospel. And so I discovered that God just alerted me to something. I had read it, I had some idea about it. But there are extensive studies of it and just in a dream. It just opened them to me. And so uh, I decided that I must write something on it. And he gave it to me the Sunday, yeah, the Sunday before yesterday, after I came back from Ibadan. So I had enough time to actually look look into it uh, and I've sent the message to some people. Let me say, I got some WhatsApp responses. Today. This is from Uche. I thank God for this message. Let me open it back. I thank God for this message. I started watching Sunday morning, my time. I would just say that this word of the Lord is timely, as always. God is very mindful of me and sent me reminders of his love, this message being one of them. Um, then I heard from Agape. Good evening, sir. Indeed, we serve a God who is gracious and faithful to his word. Thank you so much for sending me this message. 
but God, I recently was in a very difficult place. My mom joined me in Joss with a very bad health situation. Landlord told us he wanted to give his house to his brother, so we should not renew our rent. We didn't even have his rent money to pay when it expires. My business was non-existent because nobody ordered for goods. Hobby's business was having malaria as well. But God showed up for us as we moved from a two-bedroom self-contained, very small apartment. The way we all share one toilet to a five-bedroom apartment with six toilets, etc. Mom has recovered, has also recovered, and above all, she is born again. God works the same way. Thank God for his incredible, incredulous grace. Uh, this one is from Chike. Chike said, thanks for sending the link on your first October message, but God, there is an Adinka symbol known as Giyame, which literally translates in to English to mean but God. It is the most powerful symbol in that school of thought, closely followed by Sankofa. You know, you, you know, Chike, Chike, Chike always has his own. Uh, <laughs> is is often on a, on another wavelength entirely. So me, I don't know this Sankofa, whatever, whatever. The Bible is enough for me. So I, I, I want us to today. I said I told you I'm not preparing anything today. I just want to, I want us to share. Because I am absolutely convinced, you know, quite apart from the scripture, I am convinced that every single one of us we have so many but God moments. So I'm going to start with Abigail, and I'm going to I'm going to revolve it around because so it gives you time to think about it and come up with more and more. I just want us to glorify God by you know I mean since He He is the one that alerted me. I mean you know so some of you may have known about this even before I talked about it. I'm just talking that he alerted me about it in a dream. Uh, obviously, he wants us to look into it, to talk about it, and to apply it in our situations, in our circumstances, because God wants us to glorify him. So let me start with Abigail. Abigail, can you recall at this juncture one or two for God moments? I I'm sure... <laughs> you 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 uh, have you, you have you have you have a lorry load. So let's let's start <laughs> with, we'll come back to you. I mean, if all of us we have we yes, have, we must have we must have lorry loads. Yes, please. Okay. Good evening, Doctor Fanny. Good evening, everyone. I want to start with the most recent one that happened uh, last week. Last week, Thursday, I was coming back home and uh, on my way, I was quite close to my house, but where I live, but I just felt very tired. So I saw a bike in the distance and I decided to just take a bike ride for 100 Naira to get home. Now, the place where I live in, the entrance to the estate is, is a, there's a small gate that would only allow one vehicle to pass. And lo and behold, as this bike man was driving, as he was entering into that gate, he didn't horn or anything like that. And as he took, um, went around the bend, we were unaware that this pure water truck was coming. And suddenly, as he turned around, we were just about a meter or two from the pure water wow. truck. And I, I was like, oh, my God, we're going to get hit. Just as I thought that, I was, it was just a little bit too late. And the bike man, the bike itself, didn't even have brakes. These are bulky men. He didn't have brakes. So he was just going like that, unable to stop. And about just like a meter or two from the uh, pure water truck, heavily laden, 
It just seemed as if something pushed this truck and it sank into the ground. It just sank into the sand and could not move anymore. And there were these boys at the gate, and they were shouting, ah, oh, God, God, how this pure water truck stopped is just an amazing, it's just a but God. Because it stopped and sank into the ground and it was just wow. rolling there. It was just rolling there. The tires were just rolling. And usually um, cars and vehicles pass through that place easily. It was not, it's not a marshy ground or anything. It's sandy, but cars, trucks, everything passed through. This one, it lurched and stopped. And then the tires started spinning. I was like, my father, my God. <laughs> If that thing that rammed into us, there, there was no way we would have ended up under the, its tires. A pair of water truck heavily laden. So that's one but God moment. This this is and the greatest the, testimony that I've had this year. Yeah. I'm this telling you, the, Dr. Phil. The, the tire, the, 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 just, the tire is rolling and it's not moving. Yes. Hey, hey, Honestly. Oh my God. Come and see this God. Oh. Come <laughs> and see this God. <laughs> Uh, the uh, boys were there. They were just shouting. They were shouting. Oh, long oh, They were, and I was just stuck with my mouth open on the bike. I was like, eh? <laughs> you would have thought something put its hand on the vehicle and it stopped and it sank in the ground. And, my Anyways, sister, that, that was the one. I, beg, mm, I beg you, I beg you, before you go on, <laughs> yes, sir. before you go on, please, can you just, can you say a prayer for one minute? <laughs> just, just, just bless God for one minute. Oba, Oba, Uyigi, Yigi, most high God, God of wonders, I thank you. On bended knees, Father, I thank you for protecting me and that bike man from this gruesome, what would have been a gruesome accident. Who is there like unto you? Thank you, Father, for mm. sending your angel to stop that truck. And you sank it in the ground, Lord God, and it was just Im immovable. You did this, Lord God, openly for people to see and people glorified you and thanked you, Lord God, on my behalf. Father, I say thank you. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes. Almighty Jehovah, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, I'll come back again to you. I'll come back again to you. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you have so 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 many. Uh let's so many. let's go to let's go to uh, Mr. Dotto. Mr. Adeleke, this is another one that this is another man that uh, is full of testimonies that, that must be that also support God moments in his life. Yes, Mr. Adeleke. Good evening, God. good evening, George. Ah, in fact, eh, it was just on time. The, the, the one that Travigate says well, our home was on Thursday. My home was on Friday. Uh -uh. I think Friday was uh, yes, my home was on Friday. I think Friday was uh, Independence Day. Yeah, that, that was the, the independence celebration day. So in school, we are supposed to come, come, come with a, a, with our a cultural dress, you know, attires. So Timidaya was putting one uh, actual fee, you know, actual fee. Rohan Buba, he was putting, I was putting a gele. Me too, I had to look for one, one different one that I've not worn for in a long time. I put it there, I put on my cap. So coming, going to school in the morning, normally we normally leave home very early, sometimes like uh, 4.30, sometimes 5. But that, that day, I don't know what happened. After the video, I just stepped off. So when I woke up, I woke up by 5.30. And that 5.30, I was supposed to already be on the bus stop waiting for Benzat. So when I woke up, I just look at the time and say, God, what are we going to do? Look at the time. Ah, we just rush. And so the time that I will rush, we dress up. You know, the, our road is somehow, the moment I get out, we will have to trek out of the estate gate. And when you trek out of the estate gate, there's a particular time. 
if you don't get out of that estate gate by five o'clock, most of the cars that are coming in, you know, somebody will have carried you and dropped you at the at the bus stop. But if we get there anything far from that five thirty, five five o'clock, nobody will carry you. That day you might not even go out. So we were start, we went, we came outside, we were standing there, it was to six, a few minutes to six. Everywhere was just dry. I look at it, no way. And, then, ah, and I told him that like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? How are we gonna get to the bus stop? There's no way. And it's very far. It's not something that we can, you know, we, we just stand there and I told him that like, first of all, I said, should we be trekking? I said, ah, trekking, no, 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 there must be a way. There must be a way. I was just, I was just standing there. You're standing there. Before you know it, God just showed up. One car was just coming in from me. The car that was coming, I look at it. I, 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 I know all the cars in high seats. I know them. I know the cars and I know the time they come. So by that time, I know that no one, everybody has already gone. You know, so we're just standing there. The car just stood up. When the car showed, I was looking at the car. Was, you know, it's not somebody that we even know. He just came, just stopped. Wind down. He was looking at us, looking at us. Ah, these people were dressing up like this, and uh, you know, and I wave and I said, "Can we follow?" He said, "No, no, no, we should come in." You know, so I, I as we were going, what comes to my mind that it was just God. It was God that came. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even thinking that was, it was God that came and took us all the way to the main road. You know, and you know, so when the, it was, I was just, I was just thanking God in my in my mind because at that point. That it is an ending. You, it can only be God that can show up at the end. That's why when they said it's the beginning and the end. Ah, no, 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 no. It is, it is, it is, it is. So every time when I think, when you, after that message on Sunday, when I start thinking of three, I say, God, ah, it can only be you. But it is it, that two words already explain who God is in our life. In fact, we are supposed to imbibe. The culture of that word it should always be in our heart in everything we are doing. But God was will show up. But God, it will, it will, it will, it will show up. I, just, I, mean, I thank God. I, I, I just bless God. I beg you, I beg you, say, 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 say a short prayer. I beg. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you because you have said it. Say your love. There's nothing that can take away your love. Even sin cannot. Father, we appreciate you because you are the embodiment of goodness. When you speak, it comes to pass. Who is that person that can show up? It is you. It is you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. You are the beginning at the end. Father, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. You know, you know, you know, even mm. we sing, say, Aka, Kaya, Aka, Giovanni, Mema. He says, God is the one. He has a big hand. He has a big hand that takes care of his children. Father, yes. I magnify you. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Miss Yandang, are you still in Gombe? Business has it been in anybody? I'm in Joss now. Pardon? I'm in Joss, Petro State. Okay, uh, thank God you have reached Joss. How many hours from, from Gobe to Joss? <laughs> hey, this one, I don't know how many hours we spent. <laughs> we spent <laughs> about five to six hours. Okay. Thank this God. Morning, thank God. Okay, at least, you know, uh, so. And then I'm going to believe God that the planes will fly tomorrow morning. Is it tomorrow morning that the, the flight is? They didn't cancel that one, so we have to go through Abuja route now. Okay, and you still have to go to Abuja. You still have to yeah, go to Abuja. To from Joss, but they can't. Yes, so now we have to go through the Abuja route. How many hours to Abuja by road? Abuja by road. Yes, from Joss. To Lagos. From just from just to Abuja. I thought you said you are now in just. You are still going to Abuja. Do you know what you said? Okay, unfortunately, she's gone off the screen. All right, who's your man? Please go ahead. 
Yes, good mo uh, Good evening, everyone. Good morning. My own but God. Yes, my own but God move uh, testimony is about my health. From the time I was like eight years old or so, I started to have headaches. My mother took me to different hospitals. They told me, oh, you know what, she was growing. I continued to have this problem until 26. In fact, I don't even know how I survived. I don't even know how I lived. I wanted to go to med school, but I, did, I, I couldn't leave home because I was afraid that if I leave home and the thing comes again, how am I going to cope with it? But it just turns out that, you know, the thing just went away. And, you know, I'm able to live my life better than I could across my childhood. So that's my but God, uh, but God uh, testimony. But I thought I was going just, to just die. went away without without explanation, without just disappear. Yeah, for me, I, the only thing I know I did differently was I started to exercise. I there was a time I was an exercise junkie. I used to live in the gym. <laughs> that was the only thing different. But it didn't went away. I, there's no kind of medication I I've been taking. But when I'm treating medic patients, I treat them not based on the textbook, but based on my experience. <laughs> So I, I, I really thank God. I really thank God. That's a book. Look, 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 maybe uh, I, look. I, I wrote a book called, called, called Dr. Stringlow. And in the, the chapter in the book is about a thief in the night. You know? Mm -hmm. And um, because my, you know, I, I actually twisted some things. Jesus is a thief in the night. Now, the way he presents it in scripture, okay, is that he catches sinners. But then, I came to a different revelation of him, which is that Jesus is a thief and he steals away our sins and our ailments. He steals them away in the night. I mean, you know, this is an example of yours now. He stole yeah. your headache and just took it away. And he took it away yeah. in the night. Yeah. I had something that was swollen in my chest at one point. I had a swelling in my chest and it was painful and it was getting bigger. I didn't know what was responsible for it. And uh, I went to church and and, and um, the Valentine would be says there's somebody here that is believing God to remove something and the person should come out. I came out and I was prayed for. And after I was prayed for, I checked it, it was still there. Then I forgot about it. And some days after that, the Holy Spirit asked me, he said, Femi, what happened to that thing in your chest? When I looked, <laughs> it was not there again. I didn't know when he removed it. He stole it away. It's the same. It's, 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 like, it's like the testimony you're giving us now. He, he, the thief came in the night. But this is a, you know, it, this is a, a good thief. I've written an article of the good thief and the, and the, and the evil thief. Uh, and he stole away that thing. Please, what do you want to say one short prayer? I beg you. Father, we thank you for being the thief in the night. We appreciate you for all the things that you have stolen from us. We ask that you continue to steal our things, continue to steal our sicknesses, continue to steal our, steal our bad habits, and to reconcile us to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes we give premature testimonies. You know, we so say, you know, uh, God has done it. I don't even, uh, uh, I don't do this again. I don't do that again. Usually when we do that, we are boasting. <laughs> and God, God is going to, more. is going to waylay us and we're going to do it in a worse way. <laughs> the real testimony is, uh, we don't know when he does it. He just does it. Uh, the Yoruba says, where, yes, Miss Yandang, I hope your system is, is fine. Now I was asking you, I was asking you if you are still going to Abuja from Joss and how long it would that one that, that how long that would take before you get a plane. Yes, we are going to Abuja from Joss tomorrow, my God. Yeah, we are going tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And we should be like uh, yes, sir. To Abuja. And then you uh, catch the, Abuja, you the Abuja, Abuja Abuja plane at what time? So it's for the evening. By seven, seven forty-five. Okay. Yes, seven forty-five. 
Okay, so you have to go early. All right. Uh, in which case, you you have your own burger moment as well, <laughs> even on this trip. Please give us give us one of those moments that you can recall. Okay, so for this trip, um, so yesterday when coming back from Barnabas's family house, so went to visit his parents. Um, his brother was just visiting us because we were like. We want to take Fura the Nunu, you know. So we're just just in, and then they're not telling us. Barnabas was in the vehicle. How yeah, dangerous! Fura the Nunu is Barnabas' favorite. Is Barnabas' favorite meal? <laughs> <laughs> it is. I, I know. I've heard him say that several times. <laughs> So his brother was not telling us the danger of eating fura and taking fura and then they are taking fish. Because for me, that's my ideal enjoyment thing, right? You'll be enjoying and taking it. So he was telling us it's food poisoning, it leads to death and all that. So as we got to the hotel, back to the hotel, Sam told me that oh, they've gotten fura. And then they could not take it because they heard that it's not good to take it with fish already. They are bought fish. <laughs> so Sam is of that school of thought with me that is a German love. <laughs> but we were schooled yesterday. So I went back to Jesus. I said, okay, before I, I'll keep it in his room. Let me just go eat fish. I was eating fish. Sam and came with his with the Fura cup and wanted to give us as. As I reached out to retrieve it from him, he stopped me and went directly to drop it at the table, on the table. And then it clicked because as women had collected that thing, I would have drank it. Nothing would have stopped me. And I had already, I was eating fish. So maybe I would have been the guinea pig. <laughs> yes, this would have been the practical aspect of what we had told. But on the norm, some would have given it. Because when he brings things, he gives to me and then I drop. But that yesterday, he categorically said, no, it's not you right. the way to drop it. I was like, I had to tell him, Sam, thank God he didn't give me this thing because I would have taken it. I see, I'm still eating fish. So that was for yesterday. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't get it. How, did you, know the, how, how did you know the food was bad? No, it's not bad. The combination of both turns out to be food poisoning. If you combine both, Yes, you take fish and you take fura. It's food poisoning and it can lead to death. So they don't, you're not supposed to eat it together? No. So if you want to take one, take it after the digestion period. This is like three to four hours Wonderful. before you can take the other. <laughs> <laughs> ah. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I beg you to say a short prayer, short prayer, short prayer, please. Just, just bless God for that deliverance. Father, we thank you. Because you say you're always with us. We never leave no for safe. Or thank you for your protection. Father, in everything that we do, consciously or unconsciously, we know that you are right there to help us, to save us, to direct us. Father, we thank you because you are indeed with you, Father. It was our wish, God. I've done so many things, but Father, because of you, the love that you have for us, you save us even from ourselves. So, Father, we return all the praise and adoration to you. Father, receive our testimony this evening. So, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay, yeah, this is your turn. Good evening. Good evening. There are too many of them. I'm just I have to think of one. We will come back to you again. You you will tell us one now. We'll come back again. They're going to go round, 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 round. So just choose one. Um okay, so um my ex-husband decided that um he wanted to 
um, terminate the lease of the house that we were living in. So he wrote to the landlord and he told the landlord that um, he was terminating the lease and he didn't make provision for for somewhere else for us to live. So we were stuck between two houses where we we didn't have anywhere to go. So we, we stayed in the house because, well, that's what you do if you don't have anywhere to go. And the landlord was sending us all kinds of messages at all hours of the night. Well, sending me messages. I didn't tell my kids because I didn't want them to panic. <laughs> so um, this was going on for a good couple of months. And then um, the landlord sent me a notice saying we had to go to county court because he was trying to evict us. So um, that morning I dressed up. I Well, I, I still didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my kids. It was in January. So I I got the notice around November I went to my sister's house. I had a lovely Christmas. I ate all the food. I pretended nothing was going on. Didn't tell anyone. In January, I just dressed up and I went to the court. When I got to the court, I didn't have a lawyer because I couldn't afford one. Um, that morning, my, my first prayer partner out of the blue sent me a message. Even till today, he does not know what was happening that morning, but I was on my who way was to this, the who was this prayer partner? Uh, you don't know my by first prayer partner, Emmanuel. So he sent me a message and said, um, God says that the thing that you're going for today is going to be, is going to be successful. So I was thinking, ah, uh, Emmanuel, this is your Emmanuel, wing. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, ah, and then this is your wing is, is very, very scary. I, I didn't say anything. I just said, amen. But <laughs> it was Amara I was telling that. Oh, this guy knew I was going somewhere. I didn't tell anybody I was going anywhere. So I got to the court and it was just me. Then, um, because you see what happened was ex-husband had his own lawyer because he wanted us out of the house too, because the landlord was also writing him. So the ex-husband's lawyer was there. The, the landlord's lawyer was there. Then it was me. So immediately they saw me, they came and said, oh, they, I said, mm, I'm not talking to anybody, please. I did not come here to meet you people. I, 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 so they, they said, oh, um, so I don't want to, I said, I don't want to discuss anything with you. So when I got in, um, there was a, a lady, she was the judge. And so it was just us because usually these um, hearings are private. So she said, where's your lawyer? I said, I don't have a lawyer. So she said, so she asked the two lawyers, uh, the two lawyers, that, why are you people here? And one of them said, yeah, he's here on behalf of the ex-husband who wants me out of the house. And the other one said, he's here on behalf of the landlord who wants me out of the house. Yeah, so you she said, you are, a, you are a lawyer now. So I didn't tell her that one now because that would okay, put me, right. that would show that I, um, I didn't, it was Jesus that was my lawyer that day, so I didn't want to <laughs> overstep my boundaries. <laughs> so, so, she now looks at him and said, so two of you brought this, this woman, lady. yeah, you brought this woman to court, why don't you settle this matter between yourself? He said, eh, they started stammering, she said, look, if you go, she said, I, this matter, I cannot agree, I cannot settle this matter. This is not my jurisdiction. You know what is going to happen? You people have already spent a lot of money. You brought yourselves here in your nice suits. You came here. You will still go to another court. And you know that court you are going to. You will spend thousands of pounds there. Instead of both of you to go and settle between yourselves. Eh? Then they started speaking something, something, something. They said that ah, they'll be very grateful if she can settle it. She said, did you not hear what I told you? I'm not settling this matter in this court. Then she looks at me. She said, "You understand that you um um I'm, I can only give you maybe 28 days or so, and then you were talking about beliefs." I said, "Yes, I understand." She said, "Is there any so is there anything that you can tell me that can help me give you more time?" I said, "Well, I have a special need." So she said, "Okay, I'm going to give you a, another month." <laughs> Hey, those guys are ready. They wanted to jump on me. Then she said, um, you know what happens is um, 
I she said I saw your defense. Um, and I'm going to tear it up. I'm going to pretend I didn't see it. She said you what you do is go back and stay in the house, contact the, the local government, um, and usually the bailiffs take about six months to come. And she winked at me. Then she said, "Look, you two, you better go and I settle to. Out, out of." I just, I, I, I was stunned. So I said, thank you. I mouthed, I didn't say it so loud. And she, she nodded her head. Then we left. They were extremely frustrated. I, I'm, I really don't know what they were expecting. I just carried my bag. told you that he, he would take them, first of all, he's giving you two months, then he would take them six months for the belief to come. So she was yeah, so. giving you another eight months. <laughs> and I was like, no, because she knew something was up. She knew. What I wrote was I had written her in, I had written a defense saying my ex-husband was trying to financially abuse us. That was why he did it like that. Because really, you know, so she had seen the defense. She knew that they hadn't seen the defense. She saw it up and she decided that, hey, okay, so you will have enough money because the rents that they were talking about and all of that was... To bring the people had not, of paying the rent. Mm. Yes, mm. but you, both of you, in your suit, you came here today because of this woman. Oh yeah, go back and go and settle among yourself. That's how I just carried my bag. I stopped at um, Waitrose on my way home, bought myself some nice, when, was it lamb chops or something? <laughs> <laughs> Went back to the house and... I was just thanking God. It was then that I now called everybody and said, look, this was happening. No, you know, I didn't tell him, I know. Um, I said, thank God. I, you know, I haven't told you this story before. It's just one of the 150 different <laughs> scenarios. Okay, you might not yeah. read 150 today. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that, that, <laughs> that, it, that a lot of this, that it was just God. Even that message from Emmanuel, which, I mean, there was no way that, and I wasn't going to tell Emmanuel because a lot of people, when you tell them, even when I told my sister after, she was like, eh, what I, eh? I was like, eh, hey, you see, if I told Wait, why, why, you. Why did you decide not to tell Emmanuel? I just felt that telling people what was happening at that time would make them panic. Because you understand, if I had told you, you would have started to panic. If I said, look, the, um, I was going to county court because the landlord yeah, was trying to... I don't panic, but I'm even saying that. I'm saying that. Why didn't you tell him after all this, God resolved it? Well, you see, the problem with Emmanuel and I is that we don't speak. You So when you're trying to explain, it's a very long-winded isn't this long-winded? Are you not confused? I even left out some facts from this story. So no, there, is this, when, there is nothing confusing about this story. If you're trying to sort of explain to people that you have to go to county court, and it's 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 kind of very. Um, there is nothing confusing. We didn't get any <laughs> confusion. There was no confusion. <laughs> you wait. Let me tell thing. you one interesting part of it because you see, the lawyers they sent me. They dropped a mail in the mailbox. And that mail, this was in November. It had like, they said, they're going to take me to court. They're going to make me bankrupt. They're going to, ah. I, when I saw that letter, Holy Spirit said, don't open this letter. So I kept that letter somewhere. It was after I came back from county court, I opened that letter. I opened then I it. understood that God knew that that letter would have made me just, you know, out of panic, I would have done the wrong thing. So that that when I tell you that Jesus was my advocate in that court, it could it was only him that could have brought out that. If I say say no, I mean I have a, I have two law degrees. The woman I say okay okay now you don't need help. Uh, so anyway, that's my. Please, please lift up a, a prayer of praise to to the to the to the God of our salvation. Hmm. It is impossible for the child of God to be homeless. The Bible says I have, I've been old, I've been young and I've been old and I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. Uh, this is the test, this is our testimony, this is our story, this is our song. God has been beyond good to us. Today I sent a message to him, he refused to... <laughs> I said the, the 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 most powerful words are not but God. The most powerful words are thank God. 
thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, because God <clears throat> has um, done beyond. I don't know any my I don't know where my mother or my father is. I don't know where my brothers and my sisters. I don't. It has just been God. So I give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a story. This is a song. He's in a savior all the day long. Samara there. Tomorrow is Amara's birthday, by the way. She's 20 tomorrow. Wow. Does she want to stop the clock? <laughs> <laughs> Amara, good evening. Good evening, Uncle Fire. Speak loud, though. Speak loud. Speak loud. Move nearer to the to the to the laptop, so we can hear you. Is it okay if I I come back with with mine? Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, let's hear from uh, Victoria Joshua. I hope she knows what we're talking about. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You were not here at the beginning. We're talking no, about, I wasn't. We are talking about God moments. Something terrible that happened, but God made a way, made a change, intervened. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Sorry. Okay, I want to, I remember a time I used to have very terrible migraine. Can you hear me? Just talk. If we can't hear you, we okay. tell you. Okay. Okay, so I used to have very terrible migraine that if I get into the sun, why the headache starts, it would be terrible. I can't even look at the sun. It was so bad. One time, this migraine thing just came strongly. I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. I had to just leave the office. And thank God, that's when I was still working with, <laughs> with one day. So I went upstairs, and it, it seemed like I was going to like going to be my last moment. It was terrible. Then I went upstairs. I managed to climb the staircase. I went upstairs and lied on the altar. And I said, God, if you will take my life, let it be that you are taking it in your very presence. And I lied on the altar. And um, and as God will have it, that Sunday, the Sunday before this happened, we were praying about migraines. And so... Um, why I lied on the altar, I, I didn't know how it has ever happened that I have migraine and sleep. I will never be able to sleep, but I slept up. When I woke up, <laughs> it's as if they pulled something from my head. I felt light. I felt, and that was the last time I had migraine. So glory to God. How long ago was this? Um, how long ago? This should be 2015. Okay, quite a long time ago. Because we were yeah. also praying recently about migraine. Okay, just just say a prayer of thanksgiving to God. Our dear Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for healing. We thank you because we can call upon you and you hear us. We thank you because you've never left us in pain forever because you love us and by your stripes we are healed. Thank you, blessed Father, for healing our bodies, our souls, and our mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Okay, Chuchu, -choo, are you available? Please, I'm on the road. Can I get back? Can, can I okay. take another turn? All right. Festus.
pesos de que era Yubi 2. Okay, I'm going to go to APA. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. So, um, for me, um, maybe I can start with, let me start with today. My TV has been faulty, maybe over a week now. There's no sound, no sound at all. Picture, everything okay. Just, there was just no sound and I left it. So today I, I thought, okay, let me, okay, I had called the DSTV, the guy who had installed my DSTV, he came and checked it. He says it's not from the TV, but the DSTV, I checked. So he said it's a TV problem, so I should take it to a technician that fixes it fixes TV and not TV. So I decided to be, okay, let me go out to a lot of things, do my hair, drop the TV and all of that. So I, I dropped the TV, then went to do my hair, came back for the TV. And um, first of all, while I was doing my hair, somebody called me from there said, yeah, that the TV is something, something to do. The first person I gave it to that said he was going to look at it, already said, okay, it's the, it's the sound. We will have to check the speaker, put the new speaker, and um, see what, um, what can happen. But they called me up and said that like, the TV, that it, um, it's the screen. And I'm like, screen, okay. How much? Then the screen mm, is like 90,000. I'm like, eh? How much is the how much is the cost? What has the, the screen got to do with the sound? Uh, so the person the screen has nothing to do with the sound. Hmm, he not said first of all when they just said ninety thousand, I'm like, what? I'm not going to pay ninety thousand to repair a TV. Instead I'll look for I'll buy a new TV. So while I was doing my hair, I'd gone on my phone, I'd gone to Jumia, I'd gone to Conga to check out the prices of TVs. Anyway. Someone called me back and said, no, it was a mistake. It was not my own. No, no, they didn't call me. Did they call me back? I think they called me back saying it was a mistake. Okay, I said, fine. So when I finished my hair, I went and he was like, no, it was a mistake. It was someone else's TV and all of that. I'm like, of course, because I'm like, how ah, will it cost 9000 to repair this? So I thought, how long will it take? He said, okay, if the speaker, he needs to go to their warehouse and see if they have it there. If they don't have it, it's charging his phone. Then he will call someone and find out, you know. So I said, how long? He said, it will take three hours. So, and I didn't want to come home and go back. That's why I was asking him all of that. He said, three hours. I got, so I went to the market, maybe for like 30, 40 minutes. I stopped at the market before I came home. I got home maybe about 30 minutes after I got home, they called me. No, madam, come, your TV is ready. I'm like, uh -uh, why did you do this to me? I wanted to pick up this TV and come home, not come and go back. Anyway, when I got home, and I found out that I could not find the key, my room key. I usually am not very good with keys and all of that. I don't lock my room. I hardly, I don't lock my house. But I had this girl that if I leave her at home, she goes to the boys' quarters. And then somebody comes, like, on two occasions, the, the groomer comes in for the dog, and he was like, I'm in your house, there's nobody out there. There's somebody there now, because the dog knows him, so he comes in, nothing. So he calls me, I'm in the office, I'm in your house. I say, go, wait, somebody, somebody is in the house. Now I say, no, I'm sitting right in your parlor, there's nobody. And so because of that, I started locking the room. And so I locked it. I went, because I'm not good with it, I lost the key. I came back home. There was no key to the room. So these guys called me. They called me. I said, the TV was ready. Okay. I said, okay, let me go back for the TV. After complaining, and I went back. Because I didn't want to go back, because also the roads are bad. So journeys of short distance, 20 minutes, you find that you're doing... 40 minutes or more. 
So that was why I had an issue with having to go back today. So I went back. Hey, where is the TV? This is your TV. I said, no, it's not my TV because my went, I went with the fan and everything. Okay, he now went, okay, he went for another one. Okay, come and see it. Let me test it. We went. Your son just went. What happened? Yeah, sound. Oh, no sound again. So it's like, okay, I have to leave it again. If I have time, um, his boss will look at it on tomorrow, and then I can come in the evening. By then, they would have sorted it out. So while I was outside, the saloon is across, is on the, at the other end, just like opposite the shop. So the guy, there's a guy in the, the saloon that I had gone there to, I wanted to learn how to make hair for some, some three months I was going there. So the guy is familiar with me. Every time he sees me, he wants a, a small money, give me drink and all of that, something to buy coke. So that today, I, I didn't want to give him anything. So when I finished my hair and I didn't see, I'm like, thank God, this guy will not harass me today. But... When I came back for the second time, I was at that um, shop. From the other end, this guy was signaling me to come, come, come. My key, my key, my key. I'm like, hey. So that's where I left the key. I thought I left the keys in the salon. I didn't know. By the time I got round to him, he said, no. That whether he's deaf and dumb. So he tried to explain to me that it oh, was no. maybe it, it, it dropped. Whether it dropped when I was entering the car, I don't know. But I didn't even leave the keys in the salon. So they just saw it and he knew it was, he knew maybe he saw me drop it and he picked it. He doesn't have my phone number. So if I had not come back for that, that evening, I wouldn't have gotten my room key back. So the whole thing about your TV is okay, come back for it. And I was thinking of all the inconvenience. It was God arranging that I go back there so that I can get the key that I left where I dropped. And I just got the key and I said, this God, you just have it. You have us, like you have our back, everything sorted. So that is let me, let, let me Let me tell you something about your, your TV sound. The, the mm. sound of your TV, they can't repair it. Okay, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So what 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 is done is that they might remove a part from mm -hmm. a damaged TV, and they will put it. Mm -hmm. Or there is really nothing wrong with your TV. Okay, I've had this kind of situation before. All right. And so no either either mm -hmm. they you know it is there is a special part of the TV that is the sound. It is not something mm -hmm. that, that is repaired here. Either you change that part, or there is really nothing wrong with it. Maybe it has it some it just needs an adjustment. Please just just mm -hmm. just just lift up a prayer of, of thanksgiving to God concerning this this uh, this you know and, mm -hmm. and it's very it's very strange that it is somebody who could not speak that <laughs> that, <laughs> that 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 saw the thing drop. God set set up that testimony. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for today. I appreciate you for doing what you did today. I thought it was inconveniencing and all of that. To go back and come back home and have to go back again, but you had it all planned out. Father, I thank you, oh God, because it actually gave me joy. It gave me it comforted me, knowing that you just have me in your thoughts. You just have us. You, you, you have plans for us. You have plans for making us comfortable, making us happy. Thank you for that beautiful experience. Lord, I appreciate you more than I can see for oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. That, that, that's, that's, a, that's a critical element of all this, what we're talking about, you know? I think mean, God, 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 <laughs> he contrives the situation. And really, in the end, we are better off that it, that it happens. Because when it happens, we go through, I mean, you lost your key, and then you found it. When we go through it, then we appreciate that. Right. So God is with me all the time. This is, you know, I learned from your prayer. So God is is watching, you know, I mean, it just tells us that, look, uh, somebody is watching over us. Somebody is backing us up. At, all, at every juncture, he is there. Sam Mukwa, God bless you. <clears throat> Good evening, doctor. Good evening, church. Good evening. We, we, we are talking about what God, what God's interventions. Uh, just give us the first one. I don't know how many we are going to be able to take today. A God intervention in the life of Samukwa. <laughs> uh, well, you asked for one. I'll give you the first one that I just, remember. Just one, just one, just one. Just one to start with. Okay. To start with, I was, I I felt I, I would have been long dead. <laughs> I would have been long dead by now, if not for God. 20, two, uh, 2003 was the first time that it ha this happened to me. I, I, I went into a diabetic coma and I did not know because it was the first time. I, I never knew about anything like that before. So I was just feeling hot inside. I drank a lot of water, uh, cold water. It still didn't do anything. And I stood up. I, it was it was so bad. I didn't know what was happening to me. Uh, but I just felt hot inside. And I just did the strangest kind of things. I, I stood up from the house, went, and, and uh, uh, at the time, Christine and I were not married yet, but she was, she, at the time, she was visiting me. So I told her, look, I'm going, I'm, I'm leaving the house. I'm leaving the house. It's too hot for me. So I went to a hotel, checked myself in, turned on the air conditioning, and lay in the room. And ah. I was still, yes, I was still feeling extremely hot, in, even in, with the AC on. And <clears throat> I went into the bathroom, filled the bathtub with water, and soaked myself inside. While I was still in the water, I was still feeling hot. So my Christian now said, ah, Luko, this situation is, is getting out of hand. So she called my cousin on the phone, and he rushed over to the hotel, came, saw me in the bathtub with the water, and touched me and said, ah, no, 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 this one is not something that will start looking for medication, let's find, let's take him to a hospital. And they just bundled me into his car and we drove off to a hospital called Tin Can Hotel, um, Tin Can Hospital, there in Kirikiri town. Now, Tin Can Hospital ha has several branches. They have one in um, uh, uh, Kirikiri town, which I think is the headquarters where it all started. And then they have one in Apapa on Marine Road. And they have, at the time, they had another one. I think it was in Victoria Island or something. Now, when we arrived there and they saw me coming, in, by, by the time we got there, as we just arrived there, I had already fallen into a coma. I didn't know what was going on. Then I woke up three days later. Wow. Only only to hear that, in fact, how, how I woke up was I heard my sister's voice from far away. And gradually, when my eyes opened, I saw her standing beside me. Now, apparently, they had called her to come. And they had been praying. When I woke up, they now told me that as they arrived in front of the entrance of the hospital, they met the, uh, um, the proprietor the medical director, the owner of the hospital, standing outside. So he was talking to somebody. So they rushed and took me in. And 
all the doctors came and needed to take my blood sample. Nobody knew what to do because all my uh, my uh, my veins had collapsed. They could not find. So they rushed outside to go and meet the man and tell him that, look, they have a problem. Oh, this guy, they don't, they don't know how to take blood because his veins have collapsed. So the guy came up, took a look at me, and apparently, because he's an elderly and experienced man, he found a way to get the blood sample from my groin. And it was him that told my people that, you guys, you, 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 you need to thank God seriously because 15 more minutes and it would be a different story. We wouldn't be talking about we wouldn't be talking about this. We would have been talking about this guy in the past tense. Just 15 more minutes. Now, the so 15 more minutes and but God, <laughs> I would have been gone. Now the miracle there that you will wonder is the people, the hospital has three branches. How does it happen that the medical director, who is the most experienced person, happened to be in that particular branch that at time. the time I came? He could have been in Victoria Island. He could have been in Apapa at Marine Road. But he happened to be standing there at the door, entrance of the thing, when I came. And it turned out that he was the only person who knew where to get blood from when they required to take a blood sample. So, but God, I mean, it would have been delayed, <laughs> delayed some yeah, so, so it's, that's just, that's just one of those uh, outstanding but God situations. There have been so many more, but you said one, that's it. Sam, Sam, I'm, I'm sure you have you have thanked God and thank God and thank God about this situation. But you cannot thank God too much. So just just ah. just lift up a <laughs> prayer of thanks, a short prayer of thanks again. Yes. Father, we thank you because even a thousand tongues would not be sufficient to sing your praises and give you thanks. We are grateful, we are thankful. We say, Lord God Almighty, blessed be your name, because you always 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 look out for us we are confident because we know you have our backs there is no other there's there's nothing else that could be greater than that we are grateful father we, we we're, we're so thankful because we know that even the minutest thing concerning us you have it under control you take everything you are in charge of everything concerning us that it is it is no wonder that it is written in the scriptures that what is man that you pay so much attention to us. Father, we are grateful. We thank you. Blessed be your name forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank God. Prince of Israel. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. We are talking about what God moments in our lives interventions where had it not been for the Lord who is always on our side so can you give us one okay um, I think a while back I had an event in VI so I I was the, the person that contracted the DJ and the rest of the vendors so it was an end of year party for a corporate organization. So, and at, a, at about 11.30, they wrapped up the event. So I just said they should start packing up. Immediately I left the venue, I entered the car to leave and God said to me, go back and tell the DJ to play a song. And I was wondering, so I went back and he gave me the song. He said, Patoranki. One song that talks about Masovasile, Masovasayo, something. But it talks about God, you know, taking us, you know, escorting us home and bringing us back, taking us to different places. So I went back and I told the DJ, oh, sorry, just leave one speaker, play the song. And he played the song. Immediately he handed the song. I said, thank you. I entered the car and I started driving. I was going towards Lakwe and the car just failed to break. <laughs> and, and, and I just, I just smiling because I know that that was the reason why God said I should play that song. And 
it feels to stop. So I had to go and I had a choice. I saw a parked trailer and somehow, somehow it was a trailer that we used to stop the car. And um, the front was bashed and all of that and came out alive, started the car, started, tried the brake on, the brake was holding again. So I had to manage it home. So, but that was what got situation that I never forget about. <laughs> wow. And you know, I mean, you, you know, you, what what is interesting about this particular testimony is that uh, is he is he go back and tell him to sing this song beforehand because yeah. he would still have done it, but he wanted to give you the faith so that you will not panic when that did happen. When it happened, yes. Just just say a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Father, we thank you for you have been our Ebenezer and you are still our help our present help, Lord. We bless you because you have been our stone of help even when we do not know it. Father, we bless your name. We give you the praise. Thank you for this that you've done. Thank you for many more that you're going to do. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me go back to uh, uh, Sister Abigail. Come and give us another one of your superlatives. Yes, sir. Uh, so there was a time uh, when I was living in my former apartment. There was this day that we ran out of gas. There was no gas and I decided to go and get some kerosene. I told my daughter at that time that she should not mess with the kerosene stove that I want. She should just wait for me and that I wanted her to go and get kerosene. But my little daughter in her bid to help her mom to else she should just go ahead and do the cooking. <laughs> so as I left, she was she at that time. Well, sorry, how old was she at that time? I think she was about ten or so. She was about ten eight, eight, years old. Eight, eight. She wants to cook. <laughs> okay, she <laughs> wanted to cook. So I went out and. My little girl went out and got a, a matches and struck. I, and before she knew anything, the stove was up in flames. And the kitchen was just filled with smoke. She didn't know what to do. She was running around panicking. I was not at home. And then she said suddenly she heard a voice say, look in that direction. And there, I don't remember putting a bowl of sand or anything in that place, but there she saw a bowl of sand. And she said, the voice told her, pour the sand on that fire. So she quickly ran, picked up this bowl of sand that came out of no, and poured it on the fire. And that's how that fire went out, was put out. When I came back, I saw the whole place blackened and everything. I, what happened? I was like, eh, hey, mommy, I'm sorry. I did this, I did that. <laughs> but God, in fact, I just, up till now, I just wonder how this almighty God has helped me. Because she was just 10 years old. And how did she hear that voice? And how did she look in that direction? And how did she have the courage and willing to pick it and pour it on the, the fire? I might have come back and hold up her heart, and might have been in, up here in, in flames. And I would have hey, entered trouble. How would you, she herself and her sister would have escaped from that situation? But God, 
but Almighty God, but God. How, mm. did, how did Samuel hear the voice of God? Mm. As a little child as well. Yes. Okay, Abigail, please, just prayer of thanksgiving to, to this mighty God that we serve. Almighty Father, our protector, keeper of our souls, you are our guiding angel. Father, how I thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Even if I was there that day, I might even be in, I have been too con confused to know what to do. But Lord, you provided the sand, you provided the courage for a little girl to put her sand on a fire. You pre prevented the building from getting burnt. You saved their lives. Almighty, how would I tell? thank you? But to say thank you. Thank you, Father. Again and again and again, thank you. Not only for this, but for every but God that you have done for me, that you have done for my brethren, Father. Thank you. Indeed, you're a good, good father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How did that sound to get there? It's one of those. <laughs> Who put it hey. there? <laughs> ah. Hello, man. Our uh, married the Ah. Uh, Ozioma says she has a but God moment. Mama hmm. Jiji. Yes, sir. This is Mama Jiji reporting. So after we do, I was just coming from the store right now, and uh, we have me, me and my husband we went shopping, and we have a neighbor that uh, we usually buy milk for. So as we got out of the shop, my husband said I should call her and tell her that uh, we're stopping by. Turns out that she was on our way to take her kids to the park. So we told her, don't, you know, don't go yet. Just wait. We'll come drop, stop by. We'll give you the milk and then you can go. She said, okay. Well, she was at the front door. So we gave her the milk. She went into the house to put the milk in the fridge. And by the time she went into the house, she discovered that she left the tap on. And it has started to flood already. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if we did, my husband yeah. not say, call her, let's give her this milk. Uh, <laughs> she would have had uh, a situation on her hands. She has this to God. Oh, to my God. oh my goodness. I'm telling you, just now, 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 that we're coming out of this situation. Now, now, now. Yes. <laughs> ah! He does this all the time. All mm. the time. A lot of the time, we don't even know. We don't know what, you know, so the, the hours that are flying by day that we don't, we don't know. We don't. <laughs> yeah. Please, now, you, now. You, need, you need to bless God for this one. Yes. Oh, God. Please, cook. thank you for keeping my neighbor and continue to keep us like this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Mr. Adeliki. Yes, sir. Uh, Uluwa Shion says that she, she is at home. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, church. Good evening. I just want to thank God concerning this one. Yeah, when I was working at Lekki, one hospital then, there was a day that I need to go to work. I don't really know what happened. I just stayed at home. I cannot even say. Because when they check my roster, they know that I'm supposed to be at work. And I did not go to work. And nobody called me. My boss wasn't around. So the next day, I now went to work. They said, you are supposed to be at work yesterday. Why didn't you call? I said, I don't know. So they now told me that something happened yesterday that you did not come home. That they don't know where the stray bullet entered through the uh -huh. roof. Yes. So they did not know. And where the stray, stray bullet hit was where I usually put my food. Like... When I come to work, there's a place that I usually put my food. I will put my food there and I will eat. So then I said the tray bullet and break the tray that was on that place. And I say, ah, it's God though. That's supposed to be at work today. I don't know what kept me at home. And nobody gave me query. My boss wasn't around. I just stayed at home. I did not go to work. So I just want to thank God for that. That's my... Three bullets, and you don't know who fired it. 
They didn't know. They had to call police to come and check. They didn't know who fired it. It was in Lekki. So this one is a mighty testimony. <laughs> if I had gone to work, maybe I would just be out there eating my food or putting Oh my God. The bullet would have eat me and that would be just that would just be the I just, just thank God for the same bullet will never hit you in the name of Jesus. Please just just stay, just say a short prayer, please. Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, thank you for your love. You are the able God. You are the all our Bogboro. I want married you. I will marry you. Hello, I shall die. Oh Lord, we thank you for your protection, for your for, for your love over our life. We don't deserve it, but you just show us love from, from your heart. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We give all the glory. We give all the honor. Oh, Lord, continue to keep us and guide us and be our shield and our buckler in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This life is very dangerous. So. Just a stray bullet the entire house. And, ah, for heaven's sake. Yes, we started like it. I yes, sir. Yeah, there's one, there's one that came to my mind that I wanted to talk about. It's just one of those special kind of testimony that uh, God does. You know, when we talk in terms of provision, you know, God has just been there. You know, a lot of the time when they talk about uh, God give us a house, give us a house, but people doesn't know that uh, someone like me, I, there's nothing I, I don't know anything. There's nothing I, I I don't know anything. I can't even do anything. When I look at my uh, throughout my life, in process of everything that I do, I thought that I was just there. God just created me. I was just doing different kinds of things. You know, it's, uh, I, I wonder I, I, where, why. Well, I don't know how great is love towards me. Okay, at a particular point, when when uh, God give us a land, you know, when he give us that land, even the we are the as of the time that give us the land, I don't even have a job at that time. You know, but it, when it, it came to a, a particular time that like that land has been there, and we need to start building, you know, and we are looking at where is the finance. Some people used to used to save money to build, but since I don't have I don't have the I don't I don't know how to save, there's no regular income, you know. But along the line, God just showed up. Somebody just showed up and, and says that what we have in mind was to talk to the person and say, ah, if the person can borrow us six, 600000 and we can put a structure on it and we live where we are staying because we're already going two years. We couldn't even pay. So we don't know what to do. And we don't. And the landlord has already on hold. So we decided that, okay, let's look for somebody that can borrow us 600000 and we can put a structure, even if it's a pack code that we can put on the land, we put there, then we can move there. So... Won't be, you know, that was what was coming uh, in our mind. So by the time we went to talk to the person, the person said, Go and bring it, give, give, uh, give me the picture of the land. When we give the person the picture, the person says, that, No, 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 600 cannot do anything. Say, Okay, this is what she's going to do. Say, Where we are, why are we living? I say, Because we are going two years. He said, I should go and talk to my landlady if she will she collect. We are going to pay if she's going to collect uh, the rent from my hand. I said, She will collect. Then she now said, Okay. It was a lady. The lady now said she will give us money for the two years that we are going. I was shocked. I was just looking. You know, somebody that we didn't even, you know, we went to ask for loan that we'll be paying small small. And the person said that, no, 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 no. We are going to endanger her lives if we go there. Now say, okay, she give us two, uh, money for two years. We pay. Then she still give us another money for another one year. One more, one more extra year. To pay and says that we should tell the landlord, had an agreement with the landlord that at the end of that one year, we will leave. It was just, but when she was saying it, my fear was that, how are we going to pay back all this money? When I look at it, how are we going to pay back? That was what, what was coming to my mind. You know, so we, when we pay the money, we have, to, we have to go back and talk to her. How are we going to pay back? She said, no, 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 don't worry about paying back now. Let's continue. Yes. He now said, every month ending, he will be sending money into my account and we should start building the place. That's wow. what the person, and we, and if she started giving, what, what shocked me was that 
this kind of person, this person, when she sent me the alert, I discovered that it is the salary as out of her salary. She has already five percent out of her salary and sent to me to go and start building the house. And she starts sending the money, and we just continue, 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 continue until we finish the house and we pack into it. And she said, That's what God asked her to do. I was dumbfounded, I was just shocked. From the scratch to the, to the you know, I was shocked. So I said, God, you know, I don't know. This, 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 it's, that's why when when I when I talk, people think that whether I'm I'm I am walking somewhere or something. No, 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 no. It's everything hundred percent was God. Hundred percent was God. You know, so so if we look about what God is doing, that is number one. Let me even let me leave down. Let me do let me let me say the let me say the next one. Let me say this one before before <laughs> go, go. this one. I will, not, I will not forget. We are in the house. In the house, we have not done done the tires. We, are, we just do the we do, you know, we are there. But at the particular point, I just told that my wife called me and said, How are we going to do tires? I said, Come, I don't know how we're going to do it because of so much, how much I'm, how much salary am I collecting? The children, no, 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 she shouldn't even go there. Leave it with God. God will do it at the right time. You know, but when God will do it, God use healing with people. Healing with people. Just God use them. The tires everywhere. You know, so God is the one. In, in, every time now, even the way we are now, in our common, I don't, I'm not going to bother myself anymore. Because he's the one that, he, he doesn't start anything and he will, that he will not finish. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. There, as I am, there's a lot of things I'm thinking. I, I want God to help. When I look at those things, they are like mountain for me, but they are not mountain for God. What I do is just to wait for him. He's going to do it. You know, so he, he, he is too, God, God, God is, is more, it's even more than what we can see, just like UMC says, thank God. <laughs> you understand? Because what, other, what, what is the adjective can one use to even see qualify this God? You know, it is just, he, he, and he, he, he never speaks that he will not fulfill. His word has been that from the foundation of the word. There was, I was reading Genesis recently. When I was reading Genesis, he was talking about, he said, in the beginning, God created the, the heavens and the earth. And there's a pause. When I look at it, it means that before he, he created the heaven and the earth, he's there. God is already there. Jesus I said, he, he, the, the whole thing was created through Jesus. It means that before everything, Jesus existed. So everything is about him. Everything is about him. Even now, the real, the real, what is real is God. God is the only real being. Is the only real is the one so so god i know that as from the beginning he has laid those foundations I, he, he, he has been our love from the beginning so the love continue i just come to appreciate Jehovah. i i just appreciate god i appreciate god father lord we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you once again father i thank you i thank you for your man for the manifestation of your power i thank you for everything that you've been doing in healing wings because I know one of the things that make me to stand, that, that you put, that you that cemented my leg, that laid my foundation, is certain, certain, uh, certain testimony that I have been hearing in healing wings. Certain testimony I've been hearing. Sometimes it triggers me. I will speak to you. I say, Father, I am here too. Don't forget me. And you are there. You will always listen. Father, I just come to say thank you, Daddy. Thank you for each and every single member in Healing Wings. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Father, I thank you. We will continue to praise you. Father, our life, our life, we continue to show your glory. Our life, we continue to elevate your name. Thank you, Jesus. For in the mighty name of Jesus, I have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Abigail. Sorry, sorry. I I just really felt inside of me to say this, and this this is uh, concerning uh, my health. You know, um, when I started working at Novo Schools, uh, there was a time that Dr. Femi Salak called me and said, um, "Oh, somebody said I should give you so so amount of money." I said, "Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you, Father." And I kept that money only for me to, so I'm trying to make it brief, only for me to fall ill. I, and then I 
went for an examination and everything and they told me, oh, this is, I don't want to say it. And anyway, where, where I'm going to is this, that God knew that I would need to go to the hospital and before time, he provided the money for me to do this, to go to the hospital, to get the medication and everything. But God, during the summer school, I used to come in a bit late because I would wait for Mr. Inzak or my neighbor to give me a lift to cut down costs. And then when school resumed, I couldn't do that again. I was like, Father, what do I do? And you know, cost of transportation, I done everything. And again, Dr. Femi called me and said, somebody said I should give you so, so, so. And I was just amazed. I said, Father, thank you. Because our wages hadn't come made yet. So I was able to use this money again to transport myself to work and back without getting late and getting into trouble. But God, thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, my Father, my God, my husband, I all. Thank you in Jesus' name. I just felt to say share that. Amen and amen. Good evening. Good evening, sir. We are hearing testimonies about what God moments in our life. I know for a fact that you have a lorry load. So just come up with one. But if not for God, I, I would have been either in prison today if, uh, for for manslaughter. Because I remember there was the, uh, the situation that I was driving, taking my sister somewhere when a a nine, maybe eight year old, eight or nine year old girl ran in front of the car that I was driving, and. She, the car climbed over her, and all I thought my mind was that I'd killed a child. But by the time we, I came out and my mind was settled, uh, we had just seen the realization that this young girl came back to say that nothing happened to her, not a bone was broken, not a complication. As a matter of fact, talking about it right now, so it just reminds me of it that I need to see that girl again. And when I got to went to visit her and the parents, she was like, ah, when she was, uh, as the car climbed over her, a, a, the hand of an angel guided her away from, you know, the part that would have caused her serious injury, as the case might be. And I just realized that if not for God, uh, that would have been a, a disaster. As a matter of fact, it has become a landmark uh, Faith's uh, story of, of my work with God. Uh, and that That is one I want to mention or share. Where about it? Oh, uh, Father, I thank you because I know you are the one who protects us. You are the one who keeps us. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I'm just returning from um, Abel Kuta and uh, we I was called up to go uh, for a meeting with uh, 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 Obasanjo. So we went in today and um, uh, we saw him. We had whatever conversation we needed to have. And then we are left. And as we were coming in, as a matter of fact, we witnessed one serious accident. While we were driving, no issues from here to Abelkuta. And after we got into Lagos, aside from that accident, we noticed before we didn't come. There's this long trailer who was trying to take turn on the left. You know, I seen you're coming into Lagos, you want to go up that seven of this in that way that people people can actually turn as if you are going back to beggar. So the guy driving didn't even notice that it the guy had gone to the middle of the road so that he could turn and make one turn because he was driving a more than uh, 16 feet uh, uh, vehicle. By the time we noticed what was going on, that is how this trailer had turned left and started trafficking at that point in time. 
Jesus, Jesus, was was well scribbled. So he had to turn off, swerve, then I had to swerve back into the road, unknowingly of the oncoming vehicle. And so we were all not laughing in the car. I see, see, well, uh, we went through all this one. We didn't have this kind of situation at at after eight, and then this kind of thing wants to happen. So I, I also want to thank God for that. And I say, Father, I thank you because of your protection. I thank you for your safety. I thank you, Lord. You are the one who keeps us from harm's way. We bless your holy name that if not for you, where we would be, if not for you, who we will be. But for you, we are excelling. But for you, we are protected. But for you, we are reigning. We are thriving. We are, we are in your presence. And we say we thank you because you are the God who is good. We've seen your hand today in our lives, regardless of our feelings. We've seen your hand. We've seen your goodness. And Lord God Almighty, we thank you that our lips will testify of your goodness. And our brethren and the family will rejoice unto your name and your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's have Miss Yandang again. One thought. Okay. Um, okay, before I traveled, I came to Bombay. That was um, last week. I <laughs> I didn't have chance for money to work. So because of the increase of wealth now, I spend a lot going and coming back to work. Mm -hmm. So I looked at how much I had. I had like, um, I think I had 2,500 or so with me. And this was like a Monday. I had the whole week before I travel. Okay, I had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I travel on Thursday. And in a day, I spent above 2,000 for transportation. <laughs> So I love that I like hmm. because I'm traveling, I would need to go to the office physically just to wrap up things. So I can't even do hiding. What do I do? I also got that even if it's one day you want me to go with this one, no problem, I will go. Then um, first day I was at the bus stop at the civic center and I got a welcome. And this person took me down to um, at the end of the day, you know, long story short, I spent 300 naira that day. I came back and I told him, no, I was like, okay, we are going to work. The following day, I was at the bus stop again and I got somebody else that took me free of charge. And so, long story, throughout that week, at the end of the day, I didn't spend up to that 2000. I would have was in 2000 naira. So God helped me. He just showed up because I I honestly didn't know what to do at that point in time. But he showed up. And this is not the first time he's doing this. So, yeah. Good prayer. Sorry? Say a short prayer of Thanksgiving. Oh, okay, okay. Father, we thank you. Well, I'm even if we have thousands, billions of them, Um, thank you because I know that the touch you have towards us are of good and not of evil to give us unexpected. And so, Father, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your name alone be exalted. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Samukwa, we're going to end with you. We're going to do two things. 
because we are still following up on our people that are coming back from the north. So we are going to pray for God's speed for them. But also, uh, we, are, we are praying against long COVID. And COVID is still around. So even some people that were healed of COVID still have all kinds of side effects. Since we are declaring war on diseases, please just pray concerning COVID. Okay. All right. Father, we thank you because you are our God, our Father, our friend, and our healer. Oh, Lord God Almighty, your loving kindness towards us is unfathomable, and we owe everything to you, Jehovah. We owe everything. We owe our lives to you. Our lives are in your hands. Therefore, Lord, we thank you because we know that you always make provision. You make a way for your children where there seems to be no way. Lord God Almighty, we know that it is you who allowed the scourge of COVID to sweep through the earth in 2020. And we know that it is still you who said thus far and no more and put an end to it. And we know that you are watching as the perpetrators are still making, rallying around again to start new plans. And we know, Jehovah, that you have everything under control. We say, Lord God Almighty, against every disease, we come against it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that yes. Lord God Almighty, Lord God Almighty, you alone are the one who has the final say. Therefore, we come against every ailment, every man-made ailment, everything from whether it is from any source, under the waters, under the earth, or from the winds, wherever. Jehovah, we say, Lord, we arrest the power of every disease and we come against it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We say, Lord God Almighty, where it is being manufactured secretly by human beings, we say, Lord, you will foil their plans in the Amen. name of Jesus Christ. You will cover your children with the blood of Jesus because, oh Lord, you make it your business to make sure that your own are all accounted for. Jehovah, we thank you. We bless you. For you have placed your mark on every one of your children. And your mark says, when the angel of death passes, when he sees the blood, he will pass over. Oh, Jehovah, we say, Lord God Almighty, no matter what scourge is preparing to advance into the earth one more time, Whatever name it is being given, Lord, we do not care. We commit everything into your hands and we say, Lord, let the mark of Jehovah upon your children be very visible. That when any disease comes by, it will pass over us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Lord God Almighty, we say, you, O oh Lord God Almighty, will stretch out your powerful right hand because our Savior and Redeemer had said, for the tribulation that is coming into the earth, if not for God, but God who had cut it short, it would be unimaginable. Therefore, Lord God Almighty, we thank you because we know and we trust you that regardless of whatever the situation is, regardless of whatever the plans are from any quarters, regardless whatever the schemes are, we know that you have the whole world in your hands and everything is under your control. Therefore, Jehovah, it is only you that we trust. Oh, because our lives are hid in Christ, in God. And 
Oh, your name, Jehovah, is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and we are saved. Father, Lord God Almighty, you will provide a safe haven for all your children in the times of the troubles to come. You will keep your children safe from every disease and any disease in the name of Jesus. Because we must, we must, at the end of the day, give testimony and give glory to your holy name. For you alone are God. You alone are the healer of your children. We thank you, Father, as we receive healing in advance and cover each and every one of us by the blood of Jesus, that when we are seen, the enemy shall be afraid of us. When we are sighted, they shall go in a different direction. Even the ailments and the sicknesses and the diseases, when they pass, they will see the mark of Jehovah on each and every one of your children, and they will go another way and will not affect your children. And you, O oh Lord, will rescue all those who, who have their faith in you. All that call upon your name, Jehovah, you will rescue, you will save. We bless your name, glorify you, and thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Say to the righteous, you are the apple of God's eye. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You are the apple of God's eye. The apple of God's eye. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. In the name of the Lord. God bless every one of you. Amen. Amen. Good night. Thank you.